Art and science have always been seen as separated, opposing fields. But you, Liu Zhang, photographer from Beijing, scientifically trained there, were also passionate about arts and always saw a deeper connection between the two concepts, a connection that brought you here to explore and show the world a different perspective. If you could describe your journey using one word, what would that be? Combination. It's like I'm um, coming from this uh, scientific background, but then I turned to an uh, artist's world. So it's like uh, combining the different perspective and different world together. So it's a combination. Photographer Liu Zhang Balong was born and raised in Beijing and got a material science degree from Tsinghua University. Despite never being employed in his area of study, the time spent at a distinguished academic institution wasn't wasted to the photographer because he manages to combine his scientific knowledge with his art, a passion that came early on for Liu Zhang. I just like to like use camera to document like my for my family, for my friends, and also like to take some beautiful pictures about landscape. So that's just you want to use the camera because you know that our ex experience is like very going like the water, you don't know what you're gonna feel about it when you get through this. So I want to use the camera to document all this that I feel. So that's what I begin with it. But then you pursued a pretty traditional academic journey, you know, for Chinese students, I should say. And that wasn't surprising to you. You kind of knew that that's the route you would have to take. But what type of coping mechanisms did you use to stay involved with photography, with the things that you actually liked, you know, to still keep an eye on those things that you wanted to do? It, when I got into college, it's like there is a, like a photography club, like a student association. So mm -hmm. I got into the, that association. So I got a lot of friends. We have the, we both, we all like photography and also we'll have some like events. We will discuss about photographs. So, and also sometimes like general, we dis discuss about the art. So that's a way that I keep to doing what I like because I, don't like that what my major is the material science. It's very, it's very boring to do the experiment. <laughs> you need to wait for a long time. So I just need to find something that I like in the college that I found a lot of friends in the like photography club and also the student television. I just uh, do a lot of, lot of work there. Even though you never worked in the area of material science for a day, you, your pictures, if you just take a quick glance at your pictures, you can see that they're very, very scientifically related. There's a big, big, heavy influence of science in your pictures. Why, can you kind of put that into words for me? How does that relate to you? Why that is, what you're trying to convey with that? I think I'm always interested in science, but not like, I don't want to actually do the experiment to do the research like in this area, but I'm always like since I'm a child, I'm like, like mice or physics, chemistry are always likely subject. Mm -hmm. But I want, I don't want to do some serious works about that. So when I change into like to to be an artist, I'm still interested in that area. So I just decide to go back to like libraries or some place like science to do some to discuss about science issues because it's, you know, it's a, a, a lot of issues that happens in nowadays in, in our society is about, about science and a lot of people may misunderstood what science is or misunderstood some serious concept of science. So that's my, what I'm want, I want to do is like use artworks to convey some kind of science concept and also like I said at the beginning, it's like if you am going to describe myself by one word, it's combination. It's not just a science and art. It's also science is very object, kind of objective. And the art is always about the art, artist to express themselves. It's very subjective. So like my combination is also to com 
combine the objective perspective and also the subjective perspective, so it's also the rational and the emotional to mm -hmm. combine them together. And that's a question that I was going to ask you later on, because I think those are very, very important concepts that when trying to talk about art and science, those are very important words, especially when you're trying to mix those two concepts, subjectivity and objectivity. Could you explain to me a little bit more why those two concepts are so important you know, to express your work and just science and arts in general? They always thought that uh, there is an objecti absolute objectivity in their research, but uh, actually there is no really objectivity. When you decide to research something, it's your subjectivity. It's mm -hmm. You're putting yourself into that area. So when you talk about science, you feel about feel it's objective, but it's not. And uh, my doing artworks is mostly maybe people think it's very subjective. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to like make myself very like in a very neutral point, so I can explain my point not in a, like a just like I told you I like this stuff or I told you that I hate some stuff. I'm trying to convey it in a kind of scientific research way. Like I, I'll do research, I'll know what kind of things I need to shoot and I'll put it in a certain certain way so mm -hmm. you won't feel like I'm put that idea into your mind. It's like I just give you this stuff and you, you will know by yourself. Could you like explain to me like that deeper connection that you see between those two concepts. Before photography is like scientists must have an artist mm -hmm. to do to do their job. But uh, in that in that time it's like scientists is control artists. It's like artists is like a whole he will know nothing. He will just uh, listen to what the, the scientists want. So that's a uh, there is a very strong com uh, connection between scientists and artists, but it's like a scientist in the control side and the artists just listen to what they said. Mm -hmm. But after photography, it's like scientists can get away with, get off with the artists mm -hmm. just because they can do the photograph by themselves and they think it's a kind of like mechanical objectivity. But like I said before, it's like there is no such thing as objectivity because when you choose something, it's your subjective. So, but scientists, is, is always, they won't say it's art. They will just use photography in a very, in a way that just to document some, something, to take a pictures of it. But there's all, all, uh, always this con connection between art and science from the very beginning. Jung's pictures aren't always planned out. He never uses human subjects or studios. Instead, he strives to capture and portray the connection between science and art. A popular concept in photography is finding that the size of moment, which describes that exact instant to take a photo and perfectly capture an experience, but with exposure times as long as five minutes, Liu Jung's photos are more of a process than just a moment. And he describes his process as a form of meditation. He told us how that works for him and what he does to get the images he seeks. Do you ever leave the house, the apartment, with intentions of, oh, I'm gonna go out there and I'll shoot today? You have like some sort of a schedule in your head, or you feel wake up and you feel inspired a particular day? Like, how does it work in your head? Like, give me, you know, walk me through a day of shooting for you, for instance? Okay, like for for instance, like I took pictures for laboratories. Mm -hmm. So I just need to, at first I need to connect with my friend that they will give me permission into the building. Mm -hmm. So I'll know which exact, exactly day, exactly time I'll get there. But I don't know what this gonna looks like. I, I've never been there. Oh, okay. So when I get there, I'll just look around and to see what kind of stuff is I'm looking for, like I need, I'm interested in the like connection between art and science. Mm -hmm. So when I get into laboratories, I'm especially looking for is there. I know there is uh, some photographs they hung on a wall, or like uh, some professors they will do painting by themselves. So I'll look for this 
like very particular, like some kind of different things in the in this space. But I don't know. When I get out of my, off my door, I don't know what I'm going to take today. If you were to look back at your pictures, the lab pictures, for instance, let's use that as an example since we're just talking about it. What are some things that normally capture attention? Have you noticed a pattern from your own pictures? Are certain colors that normally capture attention? Like, are there certain things? I think as a beginning, I'm particular like a very street document and also keeps the color very cool like just a green or blue like sign and this kind of mm -hmm. color cast and but the because that's in China so it's kind of different between the laptops in China and in American mm -hmm. so at first I, that summer I came back to my undergraduate university I just took some pictures there and the those pictures are always like in a cool color. Mm -hmm. But when I came back to New York, I connect my friends here, like Columbia or MIT somewhere. I just go to shoot and I find that it's very different. The color here is more, it's more colorful here in the lab trees. You can go like red and yellow and the green, blue, this, yeah. this stuff is make me be, to rethink about what the lab trees should look like. Because mm -hmm. it's, like scientists, they are also have emo emotion. They will also like this. They they put this color into the laboratories. They have a reason. Like the red is like a warning that you know those stuff may be dangerous or something. Mm -hmm. But just to make the laboratories looks very different. So, but I'm not like looking particular for some kind of color. I just want to keep the. The pictures looks like very rational. It's not emotional. Uh -huh. I always work by myself, so I don't mm -hmm. I don't have an assistant. So yeah. I don't talk to people. I just go there and do my stuff. So mm -hmm. because I like I said, just sometimes the exposure time will cost like three to five minutes. You need to visit there. I'm just uh, stay there and. Uh, clear my mind and uh, just by myself and uh, without other people. And you know, going back to the, basically to what you're all about, which is the concept of science on one hand and arts on the other, you're also about trying to find that equilibrium point, keeping all those things in mind. Why is finding that equilibrium point even necessary to you? For me, I because I came from this science background and when I do art project, I don't want to be my audience is just uh, artists or some like people that are interested in art. Mm -hmm. I also want to like scientists or these people that have science background, they're interested in my work and, or, and they can get something from my project. So that's uh, why I always trying to get to this point. It's like, because I, I think like art world is like a very street or very, it's kind of like a small world like people just uh, talk to each other in artists, that's not what I want. I want mm -hmm. to, to get more people get into this conversation. It's not just artists and also science and also the general public and other, lot of other people. So if I want to, if I want to get to do this, I must, must to, find this point that people can know what I'm doing. I think it's also for not just a scientist, an artist, and just a people, a lot of people, they will get there to open their mind. With the growth of the digital age and the rise of social media, it has never been easier to take a picture, slap on a filter, and share it with literally the entire planet in just seconds. That changes how photography is viewed and sometimes makes it hard to distinguish amateur from professional shots. That's why Liu Zhang thinks it's fundamental to make a clear distinction between a photographer and an artist. He exemplified to us how those changes in photography can benefit some artists who use the flood of media to their advantage and how digital photos on apps fail in comparison to printed pieces of artwork. People is crazy for pictures, but pictures is 
not when you have a physical physical photograph, you you will value it. You will know that you're some kind of it's a thing for yourself. It's an object. But now, as you don't have an object, and the people don't value for pictures, it's, you just create, and the people forget them. And uh, for for artists or for some people that uh, think about this this question, is like what we need to do is to get all this data. This is kind of like science is uh, you need to get all this data and to analyze what is happening. For now, it's very difficult to say who is a good photographer because mm -hmm. photography is like ha have a, it has a tradition now, it has its own history and it's very academic now. It's kind of like a very academic now. So people know how to make a good pictures. It's very easy. It's not difficult. It's like, unless like painting you need to learn for maybe five or ten years you can make a good painter but photography several months can make you a good photographer so it's so what i'm trying to say is it's not uh, to be an for me it's not important to be a good photographer because when you talk to people you tell them you're a photographer they will say maybe you take landscape photo photographs like wedding photographs is you can say those photographers are good photographers, mm -hmm. but if you are going to say somebody are, are, is a good artist, like they doing photography stuff, mm -hmm. it's very different. Like they will analyze the, what's happening in the photography world. It's mm -hmm. so like my, one of my teacher, is, uh, she's name is Penelope Ambrico. Yeah. And uh, do you know one, one of her pro, very famous project is he just download a lot, lot of sunset pictures from Flickr and uh, she will literally put all these photos, like several uh, hundreds or thousands of pictures on the wall. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how people crazy about to take pictures about sunset. It's just uh, hundreds and thousands and millions of photographs of, of uh, sunset. So mm -hmm. when people see saw her work, you will know that she is trying to critique this kind of phenomenon because yeah. people is just taking photographs and without thinking about why they talk, took photographs. Yeah, I, I agree. I think now it's, I still think that you, you can tell even on Instagram and whatnot who is a good photographer and who is not, who knows how to use certain angles and who yeah. has a good perspective, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think now is an age that people are trying to go more for being unique rather than being good because like you said, it's yeah. fairly easy to learn photography skills. But so you try to find, you know, like a, a unique way to go about what you do, like the sunset thing for instance. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like you either have a skill, you know, like you either have something that you can present to the world and people will actually enjoy or you don't. And I feel like that's especially easy to see when you're taking pictures of people because it's very easy to take cheesy pictures of people, don't you agree? Yeah. It's like a lot of times you take pictures and it's like, uh, you know, I don't really know. But anyways, among all those things that you're trying to keep in mind, that you're trying to connect, that you're trying to present to people. Do you even have time to look at other people's works and admire other photographers? For me, I think the very first photographer that I like most is uh, his name is uh, Sugimoto, Hiroshi Sugimoto. Mm -hmm. He's a Japanese photographer, like maybe he's 60 or 70 now. Mm -hmm. And uh, his very beginning, his very first project is taking, is taking photographs of empty theater. And he will just a project like the film projector to project the film like one or two hours and like the camera to expose the whole time. So when the pic when you see the picture is like the screen is totally white. But you can see because the light of the screen you can see the seats and the environment of the theater. So that's a very different way make me think about photography because at first I think photography is just about moment but mm -hmm. in his work is always dealing with time you can see the one one hour exposure of the theater and you can the white screen is actually a, a film in mm -hmm. one picture so that's why I admire his work because he's he's dealing with this very big issue but he can put it in a very easy way, easy way that 
you can understand. Mm -hmm. So is that a source of inspiration for you, you would say? Yeah, and also his, his work is very, very rational, it's very calm, so I like his work a lot. Are there other things that you use for inspiration? Maybe the city, does the city inspire you in any way? Maybe at the beginning, it kind of inspired me. I, I also like to like just walk through the street to take some pictures, but for now I'm more my work face so, so it's like I'm I know what I'm gonna take and maybe I'm gonna don't plan for the the place but I know what I'm gonna take is just like this. Was it was New York would you say that New York when you first got here was it more inspirational or intimidating to you? Uh, I think it's both because uh, I came from Beijing, so New York is, in, in a way, is kind of like Beijing. It's a very big city, and mm -hmm. uh, you need to take the subway. It's kind of like like that. But uh, the different thing is like in New York, you, you can see a lot of exhibitions and uh, such such kind of thing you can't see in China. So that's the inspiration part for me, and also that's the reason that why I like New York is. I can saw, I can see all this stuff and uh, always the new stuff. Mm -hmm. I can know what other people is doing and uh, if my stuff is just uh, some people have already done, so I will know. It must be treating you well because you want to stay here, right? Yeah, maybe for like I. This year is my sixth year, so I'm gonna graduate. I won't mm -hmm. stay here. I think at least for two or three years, so I can learn more. Because for now, I think. I'm just uh, getting to warm up. I know how this city, how, how it's working. So I want to stay here for maybe a longer time. What are some other things that you want to do after? First thing is how to support myself. <laughs> it's like how to That's get, a good one. Yeah, how to get some money to support myself. Because you know, for artists, it's always difficult to live here. It's, New York is very expensive. And, and uh, a lot of artists. Yeah, and a lot want. of artists that you want to get, get from the, them is very difficult. So, but I any future try. projects, artistically or not, that you have in mind that you want to share with us? Uh, so for now, it's uh, for my thesis project. It's, I'm already done for, have done for like six or seven months, and uh, it's, uh, I'm going to build a fictitious museum. It's called the Museum of Science Fetish. Mm -hmm. So it's based on the very famous science thought experiment in the history, like the. Schrodinger's cat, I think most people know what it is, and twin paradox that proposed by Einstein. Mm -hmm. Like this kind of thing, because thought experiment is the experience you can't really done in a physical way. Mm -hmm. So my, my point is I just create some objects or some papers, some archive to demonstrate that people are actually did this experiment in the history. And uh, I built a website for the museum and the, the museum is will only exist on the website, so it's also a virtual space, it's not a real space, it's kind of related to the thought experiment, it only exists in mind. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm, I'm now I'm doing. And maybe I think it's for future for one or two years, I think I'm gonna still working on that. <laughs>